Hi everybody and welcome to Insights. My name is Kevin McGarvey. We're coming to you from Cumberland County College and this is the first show of the third season of Insights. So we thanks very much if you've been uh, hanging out with us. My guest today is Mr. William Hughes Jr. Uh, Mr. Hughes is the 2014 Democratic candidate seeking election to the United States House of Representatives representing the second congressional district. Uh, Mr. Hughes is the son of former representative Bill Hughes who from 1975 until 1995 was a member of the U.S. House. Uh, Mr. Hughes has worked, worked for over seven years with the United States Department of Justice and now practices law with Atlantic City's Cooper Levinson firm. And it's shaping up to be a very competitive race for uh, really the first time in about two decades. So it's a, a real pleasure to have Mr. Hughes on the program today. Uh, I should mention that Congressman Lobianda will be appearing on the show in about two weeks' time and we will be running these shows back to back right up until Election Day. So uh, having said that, Mr. Hughes, it's a pleasure to have you here. Kevin, thank you very much for having me. Thank you. Uh, I got hold of your campaign literature uh, a few nights ago and I've been uh, poring over it. You, the, the very first uh, bullet point you have here, you say that, that you have a plan to create and, pre and, and protect jobs and what you call light a fire under the economy in South Jersey. Now the economy here has been uh, very slow for a long time. What, what, what plan do you have? Well, I have to correct you there. It hasn't been slow. It's been terrible. We have a long-term unemployment rate of 12.6%. And that was before they closed four and possibly five casinos in Atlantic City, putting up to 10,000 people out of work. In Cumberland County here, we have one in four children, one in four, living underneath the poverty line. We have one in five people living underneath the poverty line. We have about 43% higher than the state average, higher than the national average, which live below the ALICE guidelines, which are the, the functionally working poor. Somebody who has a job, but they're just one doctor's office visit away from financial ruin. Mm -hmm. So with the long-term unemployment rate as it is, with the economy as it is, we need to do something different. And that's what I've been talking about in working and bringing back manufacturing, working to diversify our economy, moving away in, in Atlanta County, moving away from uh, casino gaming, but in so doing, creating an economic engine out of the Atlantic City International Airport that would be a driver for the entire region, including Cumberland County. You've talked about rebranding the area as well. What do you mean by rebranding? Well, one of the things that we've seen, particularly in Atlantic City, is that our customer base, uh, who used to be come from the surrounding states, they now have casinos of their own. And casino gaming benefited the entire region. People in Cumberland County worked in Atlantic City, or, were, or many people work for companies that service the casinos or casino-related uh, industries. Mm -hmm. And so in rebranding the area, what we need to do is do three things. Number one, we need to diversify the economy. Number two, we, we need to maximize our existing resources. And number three, we should do what other places are doing, and that's tapping into the emerging markets. And by emerging markets, I'm talking about China and India. If you take a look at other areas that are booming right now, they're doing that by seeking out and obtain, obtaining that type of investment, which spurs jobs, which spurs manufacturing, and, func and uh, effectively lowers the unemployment rate. What about the casinos themselves? Uh are we giving up on Atlantic City as a, as a gaming resort? Or are you, do you think that we can rebrand Atlantic City as well? Absolutely, we can rebrand Atlantic City, and we should not give up on the casinos. And one of the things that we need to do is fight for Atlantic City and fight for those jobs. Under my plan, what we, would, what we should be doing is trying to get direct international air access mm -hmm. into Atlantic City International Airport. You know that airport out there has a 10,000 foot runway. It's one of the largest in the region. It can, can accommodate every aircraft the world builds today. Mm -hmm. 747s, it used, the Concorde used to land there. It's my understanding that the space shuttle, that was one of the alternative landing sites no in case of an emergency for the space shuttle. Mm -hmm. But the point is it is, a, it is a huge runway capable of accommodating very large aircraft. It is an international airport with no international flights. Now, other gaming jurisdictions today, they are looking towards the Chinese middle class. 300 million people. You know, we have 317 million people in the United States. Mm -hmm. 
but they have 300 million in their middle class. These people have money. They want to travel. They want to be entertained. This year alone, the Bahamas is, are going to receive two billion dollars in investment from China. Billion. Two billion. Antigua, 1.4 billion dollars. Mm. Atlantic City. Atlantic City, zero. Mm. The Hang Shang Group. Uh, out of Macau, just inked a multi-million dollar deal to fly Chinese high rollers from China to London. We have a beautiful beach. Mm -hmm. We have great hotels. Mm -hmm. We have this beautiful airport. All right, let me let me ask you a let me ask you a tough question if you don't mind. I uh, I, I saw your first uh, campaign commercial online the yes. other day, and um, you say in that commercial that that we've lost half the jobs in Atlantic City over the last twenty years or so. Yes. And in the commercial, you, you seem to blame Congressman Lobiondo for that job loss. Is that really fair to blame the congressman for something? Uh, something isn't, isn't it more complicated that the casinos uh, closed because of corporate decisions and because of competition from other casinos in other states? Is it, is it fair to point to say Mr. Lobiondo was? Congressman Lobiondo failed to recognize the warning signs that have been there for a long time and act upon them. Mm -hmm. That's what I blame him for. And what, what, what warning signs would they be? The pending competition from surrounding states. Mm -hmm. From the fact that sports betting, which is a federal issue, uh, required a change in the federal law. You know, at a time when you had a Republican Senate, a Republican House, and a Republican President, he knew and failed to act to bring sports betting to New Jersey. He absolutely failed to do that. He currently sits as the chairman of the aviation subcommittee. Now we know that we've lost those, those customers to the surrounding states, that we need to tap into these emerging markets. And so what he could have done <clears throat> is, if, or if I were the chairman, like he is, of the aviation subcommittee, and if I had taken a lot of money, like he has, from Boeing, from the Airline Pilots Association, from the Air Traffic Controllers Association, from the Flight Attendants Association, from the uh, PACs for the major airlines, all of whom want things out of his committee. If I were Frank Lobiondo, I would have said, you know what, folks, I, I'll get to what you guys want. It's all very important. But right now, I'm focused on bringing direct international air service to my 10,000-foot run international runway in southern New Jersey. And until I find a solution here, I can't focus on anything what you guys want. How fast do you think we would have international air service? I think that would come on the front burner. So why, why didn't he do that, do you think? That's a good question. But that, that is the hallmark of Congressman Lobiondo's career. Look, he's a nice guy. He'll show up at a chicken barbecue. He'll show up at, at events. But we're talking about the people of South Jersey, a long-term unemployment rate of 12.6%. And bringing in international air service directly benefits southern New Jer all of southern New Jersey, including Cumberland County. Because with international air service, you bring in air cargo. And you combine that with a foreign trade zone, like we have here in Cumberland County. Direct international access, which is only less than 30 miles away. Because mm -hmm. right now, we have a, a foreign trade zone. A foreign trade zone is a zone with reduced and eliminated import and export taxes for goods that are, that are manufactured within the zone. We have one at Millville, Inter Millville Airport. But it relies, but Millville has to rely upon Newark for access to the international markets. Makes it difficult, more expensive. Imagine if it's closer in Atlantic City. Mm -hmm. So if you bring in air cargo, you bring in new customers, and you have a foreign trade zone, you reintroduce manufacturing, you diversify your economy, and you bring in new customers to jumpstart the Atlantic City economy. It's a win-win-win situation, and it makes sense. So I blame Frank Lobiondo for standing silent while these warning signs for years have been there. And yes, that is his job. Well, another thing that I'm, I'm, I'm uh, uh, like clarification about, you, you say that you'll keep the promise to our, our veterans as well. Is, has, has Congressman Lobiondo not done a good job of that? You know, again, this is one of those issues where Congressman Lobiondo talks east and walks west. He says he's for providing health care, uh, local health care for the veterans, and yet he voted against such health care in, in 1999. He voted against adding additional claims processors. He voted to cut the VA budget through the sequester. You know, just last year, 
around the time of the government shutdown. He voted to deny veterans, elderly, and children food stamps in, the, in case of a government shutdown. So you can't you know, say one thing and then do another. And, he, and yes, he has introduced bill after bill after bill at election time mm -hmm. to benefit veterans. And each one of those bills has died in committee. Uh, health care, you mentioned. Uh, let's talk about health care in general. Are you one of those Democrats that supports Obamacare fully and enthusiastically, or, or do you think that it uh, lacks some very important ingredients? The Affordable Care Act, the goals are laudable. How could you be against providing health care for people mm -hmm. at an affordable price? The problem with the Affordable Care Act is that it, it falls short in many areas. First off, it's very expensive for businesses, but it's also very expensive for individuals, particularly here in New Jersey. You know, for a family of five, providing health coverage, uh, full health coverage for a family of five through the exchange costs $26,000 a year. Mm -hmm. While the same policy in California costs fourteen thousand dollars a year, there's something wrong with that. Mm -hmm. You know what we need to do is we need to work with the market. You know, make sure uh, work with the market forces. Provide, make sure that there's competition, true competition. And any conservative would be for that. Creating creating a regional marketplace to make sure that. Insurance companies could sell across state lines, thus driving down the cost the cost of health coverage. But is is this actually possible? The the Republican Party has voted against Obamacare. What's the number? Forty five, fifty times. How are you going? How would you possibly make it more efficient? And I guess how long would it take? Is my question. Is that something that could be done in a, in a year or two, or are we talking decades long process here? Well, this is something that has to be done immediately, because health care is expensive. And there are problems today. Look, there, there are things about the Affordable Care Act that are great, mm -hmm. truly. Mm -hmm. uh, you're talking about not denying people because they have a pre-existing condition. Sure. N not denying health coverage simply because they get sick. Mm -hmm. These were problems before the enactment of the Affordable Care Act. Mm -hmm. Keeping kids on until they're, they're 26. 26. Right? Those, are, those are good aspects. And, and people generally like that. And you know what? When you buy health insurance, you want to know that you're covered. Mm -hmm. And before the enactment of the Affordable Care Act, it wasn't so. But at the same time, we, we have uh, problems, particularly with the, the employer mandate, which seems to be both arbitrary and hurts businesses. W that needs to be totally revised. We need to work to ensure that there's true competition to drive down the cost and allow the market to work and move away from the one-size-fits-all type of health insurance policy that seems to be required by the Affordable Care Act. These things make sense. And Congressman Loviando wants to go back to the way things were, back when the time when insurance companies denied coverage, back in the time when every year, every year, between 2001 and 2009, there was an increase of insurance premiums between 15 and 25 percent. Mm -hmm. that's, that's what he voted for. Mr. Hughes, we have about a minute before we have to go into the, uh, the break. Uh, Hurricane Sandy, where are we now two years after the storm? Two years after the storm, here in Cumberland County, we're still nowhere. We have entire areas in Cumberland County that, that were devastated. Fortescue, Money Island, uh, you know, in commercial township, down township, in that area. And they receive zero in Sandy funds. Now, there are other areas you know, where they're still having their Zero problems. Zero in Sandy funds. Zero in Sandy funds. And they've gone to Congressman Lobiondo, and Congressman Lobiondo has said, well, you need to go to the state because it's the state funding formula. And they have gone to Governor Christie in the state, and, and what the state has said, oh, no, it's not the state funding formula. It's the federal language. So you need to talk to Congressman Lobiondo. So you have Congressman Lobiondo pointing the finger to, the, to Chris Christie, Chris Christie pointing the finger to, to uh, Congressman Lobiondo, and the people in Cumberland County just want to get back to where they were pre-Sandy. People are out of their homes and people are out, are out of their work. And it's simply not fair. And you know what all people want is a straight answer out of their government and they're not getting it. We're gonna come back in about 30 seconds or so. We're gonna take a real short break. Thank you very much. Thanks, we'll be right back.
Hi, I'm Larry Kane in the Cumberland Mall. All the best to everybody at Cumberland County Community College. Your success begins there. Hi, and welcome back to Insights, the second half. Uh, our guest today is Mr. William Hughes, Jr., and he is the Democratic candidate for the second congressional district. Mr. Hughes, I have so many questions for you. There's no more important issue in South Jersey, Cumberland County, than unemployment. Uh, where do we even begin to tackle that problem? Well, in Cumberland County, or in South Jersey, we have a 12.6% long-term unemployment rate. And the number is actually higher than that. Because in Cumberland County, so many people have been unemployed for so long that they're not even counted as part of the statistic anymore. Mm -hmm. And that is bearing through other statistics, such as Cumberland County is number one in the entire state for the number of people in poverty uh, th throughout the county. Mm -hmm. One of the things that we need to do, first and foremost, is we need to extend uh, unemployment benefits so that people can uh, make their payments on their rent, for food, and the like. You know, Congressman Lobiondo says he's for extending unemployment benefits. He actually signed a letter to Speaker Boehner to try and say, hey, why don't you bring this to the floor for a vote? But he was provided with the opportunity to sign something called a discharge petition, which would have forced Speaker Boehner to bring extended unemployment benefits to the floor for a vote. And Congressman Lobiondo refused to do that. So, you know, he would sign a letter which does nothing, but when given the opportunity to sign something that would actually help his constituents, mm -hmm. he walked away. And that, it, time and time again, that's what we've seen. Congressman Lobiondo wants to do something that appears to help, but in reality, doesn't. Again, walking east and talking west. We need to real help today. You know, just last week I was in a, at a food pantry here in Cumberland County, and I came across a woman, she looked like my grandmother. She had the nice sweater vest on and, and the purse. And she stood outside and, and, and she introduced herself. She said she was 87 years old. Mm -hmm. And this was her first time to the food pantry. And she said, you know, I survived the Great Depression. She said, I was small, but I, I was, I was, we survived and I was there. Never in my life did I think I would stand in a bread line, yet here I am. Nobody in South Jersey. How did that make you feel? It, 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 this is why I'm running. This is exactly why I'm running, because we have such problems that aren't being addressed. And they're not going to be addressed through press releases and, and Twitter, uh, you know, Twitter feeds and the like. They need to be addressed through hard work in Washington and addressing the issues. And truly and honestly, reaching across the aisle and working together to get something done. Washington is broken. And we're feeling it here in South Jersey. Hence the high unemployment rate. Hence, you know, the job closures. Mm -hmm. Hence the high poverty rate. We have to do something. We have to go in a different direction. Let me ask you, uh, I, I sent an email to the college community a few weeks ago and told them that uh, you're going to be on the show. And I asked them to submit questions to me. So I have a number of topics that I'd okay. like to throw at you. Just. Uh, sort of impressionistic. Give me some quick answers on, on each. Um, do you believe in climate change? Do you believe in man-made greenhouse gases and uh, yes. detrimental effect on the environment? Yes, it, it is. There is a detrimental effect and there is a correlation to, you know, our carbon emissions and the and our weather patterns. So it is impacting us. It And it's you know, we have we have to take in that into account. So you do believe that from the gut, and that's something that you would, would that be an important, uh, would that be something that you would work on in Congress? Uh, yes, we should. We should be working on alternative energy sources, mm -hmm. both for the security of the United States, to rely less upon foreign oil and the like, but also because it's good business. You know, we can and we should be making money off of creating alternative energy sources. And the fact that we're not, means that we're, we're, losing, uh, we're losing out. Other countries are. And we better you know, wake up and see where the economy is going. How about gun control? Gun control, you know, New Jersey is one of the most heavily regulated uh, states in the nation when it comes to firearms. The problem isn't New Jersey. And I wouldn't be in favor of, of 
more restrictions on New Jersey residents. The problem is the other states where there are little restrictions, where people can go into a show and buy as many firearms as they want, no background check. Somehow these firearms make their way into New Jersey. I discovered that as a federal prosecutor and I prosecuted gun cases and, and that is the real problem. I don't recall ever running across a case where you know a firearm was used in a crime that was charged federally mm -hmm. that was actually acquired in New Jersey. Almost always they came from other states. So you know what we need to be doing is injecting fairness. How about minimum wage? You know it would be great that everybody could be paid 10 10 an hour, $12 an hour. Right now we have to focus on getting everybody back to work. I prefer what right now in the short term today doing what Warren Buffett suggested, and that is increasing the earned income tax credit, mm -hmm. which today puts money back in families' pockets to ensure that, that, that they're being used. Uh, I'm in favor of, of, of increasing the minimum wage, but right now we gotta focus on, on what is doable, particularly given the state of our economy here in South Jersey. You know, and how does Congressman Lobiondo feel about the, the earned income tax credit? Uh, I think that there's been silence on, in that regard. I, and, and, but he, is, he has supported the increase in the minimum wage. But you know, that, does not, that does little if you increase the minimum wage and the job isn't there. We need to bring the jobs first. Uh, but increasing the earned income tax credit does put, people, uh, put money back in people's pockets immediately. Why do you want to be congressman? Why would you, do, why would you subject yourself to all of this? campaigning, running around, making speeches every single day? <laughs> you know, it's, it's not the title. It's what we can do with the job and what should be done with the job. About a year ago, I sat with my wife and we sat around the, the kitchen table and we looked out and I said, you know what? Our lives are going to change. The economy here isn't good and it's about to get much, much worse. Mm -hmm. I somewhat predicted what was happening. Not to this magnitude. I don't think anybody could have predicted the magnitude. But I sensed about a year ago that things were not well. And looking in Washington, all we saw were the political games going back and forth. Both the Democrats and the Republicans, more intent on creating, throwing spitballs at each other than actually getting something done for the people. Who do you admire in Congress? Can you name some names? Some, some or, or in the Senate? You know, in, this, in, you in the Senate, to? I really... I really admire John McCain. I tell you what, he is a uh, he is a true Amer American hero, and he uh, he says what he believes. He's very unpredictable, and he is unpredictable. Um, but uh, but he's predictable in one aspect that you know that what he says, I think that he truly believes, mm -hmm. and he's not worried about ruffling feathers uh, for for the sake of of political gain. He, he does it because he truly believes it, and he truly believes it's in the best interest of America. And I admire him for that. I may not always agree, but I know that his heart is always in the right place. Mr. Hughes, what do you read? What, what books and magazines do you read? Oh, jeez. When you're not reading law journals. What do you read for <laughs> I, well, I, I do I do read a lot, a lot of law journals, but I, I, like, uh, I like David McCulloch. And uh, so I've read uh, The Path Between the Seas. Uh, his, his biographies are out of this world. Tremendous. Um, I, I like to read Time Magazine. Mm -hmm. uh, I like to read the, the National Review. And, and uh, I quite often read both the Washington Times and the Washington Post. Mm -hmm. uh, ISIS, President Obama recently made a speech um, about funding and arming the Syrian rebels. How do you feel about ISIS? Is it a great threat to the United States? How would you vote on funding the, the Syrian rebels? Well, the, the, the idea of arming the Syrian rebels uh, or certain factions of the Syrian rebels was an idea that actually came from, from Senator McCain. And, uh, and he supported, he actually went into Syria and met with these folks. Um, ISIS presents a clear threat to the United States. We need to send a strong, a clear, and a consistent message that the United States will defend itself wherever and whenever 
it deems nece necessary to protect its interests. Mm -hmm. Because of the complicated situation that we now find ourselves in, you know, it seems that arming these rebels and working with them appears to be the best and clearest shot to, uh, to both uh, stabilizing the Middle East and combating the ISIS threat. Americans are so tired of war. Uh, don't you fear that this could turn into actual military troops on the ground? We keep hearing that we're not going to be putting group troops on the ground. These are going to be selected strategic airstrikes. Is that actually possible, or do you think that this uh, could lead to troops on the ground? I think we're and a prolonged presence there. I, I think that we are all afraid of that. Going into going back to 2001 when we first went into Iraq on this uh, on this uh, errant journey to look for chemical rep weapons that never existed. But the fact of the matter is, is that we have a terrorist organization out there that is growing in numbers, that is growing in popularity in the in in Western Europe and in the United States in some radical for uh, in some radical portions of, of, of Islam and that their avowed goal is to inflict damage upon the United States. Yes, we're tired, but we must be ever vigilant to protect ourselves. And you said just before that Washington was broken and we can't get either side to agree on anything. Do you think that this is a, a matter that both sides of the aisle will come together on? Uh, it is evident that they have, because the Republican House of Representatives uh, voted to agree with the President. And, uh, and it seems uh, as if, you know, they, they seem to concur that this is the best of the worst alternatives in order to uh, ensure or protect uh, the United States. Thank you. Uh, we have about a minute left. I have one, one final question for you. Uh, imagine that you and I are sitting here a year from today and you are celebrating um, a great year. What is it that you've done? What, what, what have you accomplished that we're sitting here celebrating? We've put people back to work. We've reduced the size of the lines of people seeking food and shelter from, from you know, Bethel AME, from the food lines. We've taken that grandmother that 87-year-old grandmother, off of that line and made her feel secure in both her home and her future. That is a successful year. Uh, one final question. Uh, do you have any spare time at all? Do you have any, any downtime or has, this, has your campaign been just going full throttle from the beginning? It's a, it's a whirlwind. Uh, it, it is. Uh, we, I wake up in the morning, I get to spend a little time with my three boys, yeah. uh, take my son Johnny to school, and then I'm off, off to the races for the day, and then I come home and, and, and they're in bed. I wish you the best of luck, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Take care. Uh, my guest has been William Hughes, Jr., a congressional uh, candidate, Democratic Party, and I'm Kevin McGarvey. I'll see you next time on Insights.